they buy natural gas from the Russians, from Putin, for $15 per thousand cubic feet. Wouldn't you like some of that action? <laughs> right? All right. So ExxonMobil decides to maybe play the game a little bit, so they buy the largest producer of natural gas, HTO at the time, for a mere $41 billion. Quicksilver partners with a company called ENI, Italy. It's called the Po Valley in northern Italy. This is global game. It's global. These other countries. Shell buys their interest in the Marcellus. Chevron gets in on the action buying Atlas. Conoco. Now, you're an educated crowd. That's not Conoco. Who is that? It's China. Who has a bunch of our debt? China. China gets in with Chesapeake. Quicksilver has something going with India, reliance over in India, because they gotta get some, they gotta get some energy. There's the Conoco, there no, there's the there's the Chinese again. They're into the oil of the Nigrera uh, in Colorado, Chesapeake. Chevron buys a company in Dallas to get into it called Chief Oil and Gas. The Japanese, you know that they're here, right? The Japanese are here. We've had them visit our campus uh, a couple of times over the past year. They've been to Fort Worth four times, four or five times. Why are the Japanese so interested in what's going on here in Texas? What happened about 18 months ago over there to their energy structure? It's called Fukushima, right? And for here, the bad F word is fracking. For over there, it's Fukushima. <laughs> It didn't work and they don't want to keep going there. And if you had any place in the world to go buy natural gas from for a 20 year contract or longer, would you go maybe to Russia? They have, and it's $17 to them per thousand. If I could get a deal in the US for $10, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to do that every day if you were in Japan? Think about the impact in your economy. Anyway. We'll go on. And, and, and now the Chinese get back again. They just announced a deal with some more production from northern Oklahoma for, from Chesapeake. Just came across the waters. Are these guys in the driver's seat now? Is it really the Shells and the Exxons and the Mobiles and the Total? total? Are they running the show? That's what the talk's about. The shale plates, what to do. What I get a lot of talk about is, hey, water use and recycling. I have a whole thing about it. It's misinformation. You have to know what's going on in this business. So sometimes that's the focus. Size of fracking operations, methane emissions. I could go into and tell you we're not finding emissions from these things and we have unbelievable amount of sensing equipment out there, not owned by Chesapeake or XTO or Shell, owned by universities trying to find research papers. And somebody's gonna be famous if it was just really bad. It's just not happening. We're looking for it all over the place disposal and earth, uh, earthquakes, well casings and designs. There are complicated issues, but it's been a tremendously safe business. How long have we been fracking in this country? 50 years. How many wells have really been fracked? We've been fracking since the 50s. 1.4 million wells have been fracked. Fracking isn't new. What was new? Shales, right? Not fracking. So it's been going on a long time. Here's, we're led into a dilemma. So successful, so good at it, as we always are, when you throw our technology, might, and talent into something, what happens? We've had the fall in natural gas prices, down to three something, whatever it is. And we feel good if it goes to 340. That's nothing, it's not taking care of business, but we see it. And the beneficiary of something else is, guess what? Not just natural gas, oil. Do you know the difference in the price of a barrel of oil and a price of a barrel equivalent of natural gas? Many people do not. Here's the story. Give me a price for a barrel of oil. How much? $105. $100, $9,500, right? Just somewhere in there that moves up and down, but in that range. An equivalent price for natural gas, you ready? I'm not into tattoos, just not, not my thing but I maybe should get one to impress upon people the importance of the next number I'm gonna give you. Take the price of natural gas. Let's make it, I just wanna do the simple math, make it $3 today, are you with me? To get a barrel equivalent of oil, you take that number, if I had a tattoo, it'd be a big six, and I'd do it right now. Are you with me? A big six. It's six times the price. It takes 6,000 cubic feet to make a barrel. So what's the equivalent price 
for natural gas. 18 to 20 dollars in a world market. It is an unprecedented bargain. You with me? And cheap energy wins. And if you got it cheap and you can sell it up, that's what we're looking at. Now, so oil, the gas, we're just not figuring out the gas yet. It's just an unbelievable asset sitting in the ground that is so dirt cheap. Jap Japanese want to buy every molecule we can send to them. That's how good it is. Now, the other thing, you know what's going on in Midland? Just like down here, it can be really tough to get a hotel room in Midland. Because Midland, they're not just, they're going back into an old, old, well-established oil field out there, oil and gas. They're going down to the shale called the Wolf Camp. And then they're coming up to the spray berry, so we call it the Wolf Berry. Aren't we clever in geology? The Wolf Berry means let's make them all. They're vertically fracking in old wells. It's going to be a monster, a monster. We're talking crudo Bay stock. Uh, and they can come back into all of these. They can come right back down into these. They can go over here. They can go up to Fort Worth. They can go over to uh, the Hainesville. Any of these shale basins, the big experiment right now, besides the great things happening in yours, and you're just proving up how good these shales can be, is to prove them also vertically. What you have back here is the tip of the iceberg in South Texas, the tip. It's all gonna change. The young engineers, uh, they're even figuring out at A&M. So there's a lot, <laughs> am I going really bad? Yes. <laughs> you know what it's about? It's, it's not even gonna be about finding it. Every well is good, we're gonna be, we are so blessed we, in a world that says it's gonna be about energy, it's gonna crush some economies. And we just got it sitting here. What do we do? We import a billion a day. It doesn't make any sense. Look, it's about markets. This is what I had to learn. I'm a geologist. I know everything about the shale. I did not know about this category. I had to learn a little bit of business and marketing. It's about base fuel, electrical production, right? How should we produce our energy in this country just to turn on lights? We're doing it. We're getting there. If, if, you're, if you're green and you want that, then you've got to have a backup fuel. I go out to Snyder, Texas. I've seen them just capping all those mesas out there. And if it's not a particular windy day, week, month, season, you still got to provide energy to that grid. You have a contract. You can't just turn off the lights and go home. So backup fuel for those. I got into something about cars, and we're going to get heavy into that in just a second. I don't know if you know this. Did you know that the space shuttle was lifted on natural gas? Every mission. Those two white out tanks that were on the outside that they drop off and they get up high enough, there was a company that had a contract to take natural gas, CH4, and strip off what? Hydrogen. The total end game future for natural gas is going to be hydrogen, and we have all of that sitting in the ground. They took off the hydrogen, put it in those, and hydrogen from natural gas lifted the space shuttle. Not from water and other things, natural gas. That's the way it goes. So look at this. Did you hear this summer? For the first time in the history of the U.S., natural gas production of electricity surpassed coal. King Coal got toppled by natural gas. Why? Cheap or cleaner? It works. And you just got, we got so much of it. Making a lot of money on oil, but don't forget natural gas. And we're talking a double barrel asset here. If we can figure this out as a country, I think we can. If we get over a couple of, of uh, myths and get over the humps. So choosing that, I'm, I'm a natural gas guy. We, we've gotten into it with uh, Harriet and Veronica. We're all over the place from their energy institute driving around our, our car. Should we go there? I go next week out to East Texas, and then I go off to Tennessee and other places about natural gas vehicles. <laughs> There's the Frogmobile, right? Can you tell it? That is a natural gas Honda. It is now EPA's number one cleanest vehicle in the country. Not electric, and you're going to hear why at the end of this talk. EPA's found out something. We're going to address it at the end. This natural gas and the using of that the emissions are so much lower today and now in affordable vehicles that was twenty three thousand five hundred dollars not forty three thousand and i just feel good in it <laughs>
All right. So what that led us to is due to a consortium of companies. I didn't know anything about marketing. I know all the geology of this stuff, but I started with a handful of people, 20, 30 meeting once a month. It's grown to 150 companies. That started in Fort Worth. I'll tell you how it's expanded down through here with Silver's Help and some of the others that are in this area. But there is the uh, companies that belong, we still meet once a month, and we, I didn't know anything about conversion of vehicles. I didn't know what the efficiencies were. Diesel, if you go to those, what does it mean when Cummings uh, builds one of those? I had to learn a lot, I had a, a big learning curve. I didn't know about stations. Got to meet T-Boone a few times, go to his openings all the time, he's a good guy. We got together, some of you have heard of it, because it's going to lead to, we came down to the state capitol, brought 17 vehicles down here for the legislators to see, and that led to something that some of you have heard about called the Texas Triangle, the Texas NGV Triangle. What a model for the rest of the country. Tennessee's going to try to do it from their cities and try to build a model around this. We got some money, the turf money, that has to be used for infrastructure. We asked for 20 stations. It's going to be 50 troops because other new money poured in to be competitors. Not 20. Wouldn't, wouldn't spend it, we're done. It attracted other people to want to have competitive stations across the, the interstate. And trucks, we asked for 500 semis to be converted. It's going to be close to 1,500 of them converted because other companies don't want companies to get away with all them freight cheaper. That's a stimulus. One and done and let the investors take over. So everything should double and triple. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what's happening. It's, it got us into then working with other groups. So I put up here, so as you can see, up in North Texas, that's us, the Metroplex NGV Consortium. In South Texas, you have the South Central one right here in San Antonio. And over in Houston, we have the Houston uh, Greater Alliance, that's uh, NGV Alliance over in Houston. We are a network and trying to get one set up in East Texas. They want it out there real bad. So that they can meet like this all the time, pushing markets, 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 markets. If we don't use it, it just sits in the ground. Everybody else wants it. We just haven't figured it out here how to aggressively get after it. Local producers, NG conversions that are going on, and stations being built. We shouldn't talk anymore about infrastructure. We're building it as fast as we can. We're a country that can get after it and not look back. And that's where we're headed. There's still people that says, should we go there? Well, waste management is not waiting. They're converting those, they run those diesel trucks 24 seven, don't shut them off. On diesel, they can be $4 or more. For their industry, it's about fuel. If you can save a buck, you start looking real seriously at it. AT&T, UPS, when we went down here to visit with the legislators, we found that the, we had somebody that we wanted to give 10 minutes to to meet the legislators first up front. The executive director of the American Lung Association, their national program is to convert those yellow school buses off of diesel to what? Natural gas. Natural gas. So we put her up front. Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad uses 1.8 billion gallons of diesel a year. Save them one dollar, I can do that math. That's 1.8 billion without hauling any more freight, nothing. Did you know, did anybody catch this? Did it come across your screen? They just committed to building locomotives to use natural gas. Because they're hauling it anyway, LNG. This is the way it's going to go. The big guys see the savings of what we're just laying in the ground and not even going after. And they're going to take advantage of it and get long-term contracts at dirt cheap. I would too. Makes sense for the stockholders too. So we're looking in that direction. All the buses in Fort Worth for 17 years have been natural gas. Even our big, giant, new, articulated one that makes the big turns. Natural gas. All right? Do you know that Ford, GM, and Chrysler are all building trucks? It's a three-quarter ton, a little big for what I need every day. But it's a start. And they're, they're, they're dual fuel, gasoline and natural gas. And you can order those now. Does it make sense? Does it make real sense? We're seeing the first natural gas cars starting to show up in race cars. Right? It's actually a lot safer. It's a lot safer and a lot cheaper. The natural gas stations, do you know about the natural gas highway? You probably do because they do a pretty good thing about it. Clean Energy, T-Boone's company. 
are building 150 new ones in a network across the country. It's half, three quarters complete. They're putting them in as fast as they can uh, uh, across the country. We also have Shell has entered into an agreement. It says 100, that has been up to 200 natural refueling stations for natural gas across the country. So they're into it in a big way. One of the reasons is another big company is in it. You ought to know this. General Electric and Chesapeake got together, and GE is the, the major technology, of course, on this. CNG in a box where they can deliver for half the cost a fully operational station. You just need the gas line to come to it. Everything is there for half the cost. That's going to speed up our movement. That's going to move the dial. And it's going to change everything. Why is GE in this? One is for the refueling stations because they can sell them to clean energy and other companies that want to put them in. But look at underneath here. Look underneath this picture. GE is working on a home refueling unit. Matter of fact, they're working with two universities in this state, University of Texas and A&M, and because, to get them into your home for refueling for 500 bucks. Why? Do you know what it costs per gallon and if you fueled at home? A dollar. And you remember that next time you're paying close to $4 for gasoline. A dollar in your home to refuel every night. Now, GE's no fuel. Here's what they saw. Market. 60 million homes already have natural gas delivered to their home, and no one's selling these. Do you see what they see? They're a big old company. They don't even think they pay tax. That's how big they are. <laughs> <laughs> 3M Corporation is redesigning the tanks to be low pressure tanks. They're going to put a big old natural gas sponge in there to bring it in and let it out, let it seep out in sort of high pressure because some people don't like what they see about that. It's going to be low pressure, integrated into the body, and it's going to be really cool. And that's 3M Corporation. Watch who's in the game. This, this is big for us as a country. 23 governors have signed on that they will convert their state fleets, not just Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana, the usual Arkansas, usual suspects. 23 states, even Massachusetts, all right, that they will buy natural gas vehicles into their fleets if Detroit will make them. If Detroit will make them. And it's going to happen because there's money. I had one of the greatest things happen in my career. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of our forces came to Fort Worth and met with five of us in a room. Not a luncheon, no fanfare, not 200 people trying to ask him quick. Five people in a room. General Dempsey, I think, sequestration, right? This is something we all need to learn about. He knows they're going to take a major hit. Guess what he came to talk about? He was asking us, can you assure me when I go back to the Beltway that there is enough natural gas for 50 years? <coughs> Which shale do you want it from? <laughs> what? But that was good of him, right? Get out of there, come into a place in Texas, in this case Fort Worth, and ask the experts, can you, because I've got a big job when I go back there. He's looking at converting the military bases to natural gas that are domestic. Cutting that fuel cost down. He's going to have to do something. He says, I think that this could be a winner for national security. And we do too. <laughs> the ups and downs in the politics, watch General Dempsey. Who's a, he was a stand-up guy to come into the right place without fanfare, without the press, to ask the right questions, right? So we're going to watch him and see if he can get this done. I'll make this real quick. The growth of NGVs today, We've only got 140, 150,000 NGVs in America. Oh my gosh. The world has got millions of them because their economies pushed them to it. In Italy, they had to do something. Oh, we haven't figured that out yet, but we will. Nearly one fifth of all transit buses in this country run on compressed natural gas. So we're making move. That's a lot of buses. The fastest growing segment, waste management. Getting waste haulers. In your areas, your cities, get them to look at it. Get them to talk to Waste Management and Republic and some of these others. Why are they converting their trucks now, not later? 35 airports in the United States use natural gas on their tarmacs and, and the outside areas. And they estimate in, uh, in just a few years, in 10 years, 50 million vehicles will be produced worldwide. Remember where we are. We're not even on the playing field yet. 
but we have the potential to do it. I'm just about done. Imports, imports, imports. Really, the reason I can be up here is because of this dilemma, which was where we started. If we look at imports, my whole life has been we've made up the shortfall of energy because we didn't think we had it here. The big field, the easy ones were gone, and we had to go and buy it. So we've been buying it. Can you imagine? Add up the years of that money gone out of the economy, and that's importing. And I go, did we not learn anything because there's all of this interest in green technologies, and I'm just as green as anybody in this room and wanting to be there in a cleaner planet and all of that. But we've got a problem. The geologists will tell you it's because of what it's based on. I didn't dawn on me when I first heard them, and it seemed okay. They're called rare earth elements. For a reason, they're rare on the earth. <laughs> One country is blessed to have a bunch. What country is that, gang? It's China. Look at the number up here. If we thought OPEC, which is about between 40 and 50% of the world's supply, China has 97% of the supply of something called rare earth elements. And in their country, the problem is, we don't allow it here, although there, we may open a mine, it will never be competitive, because you have to take down mountains, gang. You have to take down vast areas because they are rare in the earth. And that is causing massive runoff, dust into the air, pollution into streams, and that's not even the bad stuff. What we have found out, and you Google this at home, one of your main things that you could do today is Google this, rare earth elements, radioactive minerals. They stick to them like glue and you can't get them off easy. And in China, they try to get them off and guess what's happened? It's, it's infiltrated into their rivers, lakes, and streams, into their food supply. Leukemia is rampant around these areas because of the exposure, but they got a lot of people. And they're making a lot of money on it. So cars, and we have to have, a, we, right now, they're the coolest thing engineers can find for batteries and magnets and control rods and lasers. They are spectacular. They just have something stuck to them that is a global, global disaster. That's why EPA had to back off so far on the electric cars. I've got nothing against electric cars for puttering around. But... I can capture some methane if I thought I had an issue. This world does not know what to do with radioactive materials. Right? We just don't know. And this is the problem about them. So we've got to just look carefully at these things. Do your own homework. Don't trust me. Natural gas exports, is it really even a question? It's sitting in the ground for $3 or so, and we've got countries that want us to export it. Well, thank goodness, they took at least one of the facilities, Chenier Energy, anybody hear from Chenier? One of the great companies out there that was gonna bring us natural gas, but now they've got, finally got the 45 permits done to ship it out of here in two years. It's gonna take two years to build the chilling units because it's LNG. They're also widening something for it to go and head over to Asia. What are they widening in South America? Panama Canal. Panama Canal. It's gonna happen. Chenier has a 20 year contract already signed up for every molecule for 20 years, starting in 2015, at almost $10. Anybody here want to take that? I'd like some of that action. And we're looking at the country all around it. Others see this potential. If we're not going to use it, if we're not going to use it, because we don't have the, the, the drive and, and the interest in getting it done here, other countries want it, because it's dirt cheap, cheap energy wins, and don't forget it, right? That's what happens. So, should we go global? I think we are. In sports, remember, we're all the way back to that first slide. Remember the frogs playing in Pasadena and winning that football game by how much? It doesn't matter again. We won it. Who's in the driver's seat? It was TV markets. ESPN and Fox Southwest decided TC would be a good addition to the Big 12 to help really secure down the TV market in Dallas, Fort Worth. See that? It was about markets. Coaches come and go. Players come and go. Teams win, teams lose. We had the big hit. It was about markets that they felt we could have locked down, especially with a strong conference coming to town all the time. So for domestic gas, do I really have my hands on this guy? This is T. Boone at one of his station openings over in Dallas. We're not even talking natural gas. Not even talking. You know what we're talking? Football. <laughs> he helped us get into the Big 12. Saying uh, his OSU 
people sure wanted to come into Texas and Dallas, Fort Worth to, to hoop it up as often as they could. So who's really in the driver's seat in the natural gas game? We are. Understand, it's us. Grassroots NGV organizations that, are, uh, that we're organizing throughout Texas and other parts of the country. Fleet conversions, large and small companies. We have lots of them that are doing this. Support them. Get involved with them. Know who they are. What are they up to? Those are jobs. Uh, infrastructure. Detroit, I think, is going to get it here. They're, they're certainly hearing it the right way. Future jobs, business growth down here. My gosh, the whole country is looking what's going on here. You've got things really hopping. And, and a lot of the country wants to know why and how can they get into this and what's it mean. This, this whole thing happened 100 years ago. Happened 100 years ago. When Henry Ford started mass producing the Model T, he didn't stop and wonder about infrastructure. He worried about getting it out at a price that everybody would buy it. They'll fix the other end of this. What roads? They were ruts. Where to fill up? Mom and pop places. We are moving in a time now of a major change in our transportation. And we're seeing this. We also want to let you know, we, we also are doing an education program that was alluded to, a new one that's come about, and that's for royalty owners. Don't forget the education of the people that own the mineral rights. How many countries in the world have private mineral rights? Who's the second one? Canada and the US. North America, am I right? That's it. The rest of the world would love this. We get visited by every country. We have programs, both royalty owner certificate for th uh, three classes. Happens three times, then you get a certificate from us, a uh, completion, and then we have an advanced one. Let's get the royalty owners involved in this industry. The more educated they are, you know what, the better the deal actually goes. There's more trust, everybody gets it done, and we keep moving. We got a lot of stuff to do over the next 20, 30 years in this country to get this energy game moving in the right direction. So we have a booth right outside here if you'd like to meet some of them to hear about this. If you're not a royalty owner, but you know people are, they need an education too. That's part of our industry, right? When they moved in on us, I've got wells up in Fort Worth. My dad, I said, Dad, we're in the oil and gas business now. We're in the gas business because they're producing off of our properties. And that's true for these royalty owners. We're trying to, we're bringing it here to San Antonio. We've already completed our first uh, group here. We're going to bring it back in May uh, to come back to San Antonio. We do it in Fort Worth. We're going to other cities. We're looking at Midland and we're looking up northeast, right? Get up there in the Hainesville and help those people. Royalty owners are critical. And we've got to help them. So last slide. Look, talk about what we're up to. Talk about what you are. All eyes are on us about what we're doing in this energy game. We got a billion dollars. We got to change in a hurry and get that multiplier effect working for us. Assets in the ground, it's not just oil down here. I know it's doing it now, but don't forget that natural gas sitting in the ground because it can change our transportation future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. If you'll come join us up here real quick. Again, on, on, on behalf of of the consortium, all our group, we appreciate your presentation. Nothing but gold in the yard. <laughs> and thank you.